Hello, Math 7 boys and girls. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in Math 7. And today we're going to talk about this thing called central tendency. Now, central tendency is just a way that we group numbers together and figure out how do they form around the middle or how do they group towards the middle. Uh, and so we call this a data set. A group of numbers is a data set. Now, I say data set as opposed to data. Some people say data. I say data. It doesn't, both are correct. It doesn't really matter. And in fact, the reason I say data. I'm Lieutenant Commander Data. By order of Starfleet, I hereby take command of this vessel. I just really like Star Trek going up, and now that's the only way I can say it. Commander Data, so Data. Okay, so what is mean? Now, you've probably done this before, but in case you haven't, don't worry. If you have never seen these things before, this is going to be really simple and straightforward for you. So mean, you're going to write, want to write down this definition, is just the average value. Okay, it's not mean like somebody's angry and is being mean to you. It's literally just the average value. When we're using math and statistics, it's the average value of a set of numbers. So all we do to get that is we add them all up and then divide by how many numbers there are. So pause the video if you don't have this written down yet. Get that paused and written down because I'm going to do a quick example of this. All right, so here's our example. We go to this problem here that's below and we have this girl named Matilda, or if you want to pronounce it, math. Ilda, I have three daughters and I missed the opportunity of naming one of them this. That would have been awesome. I'm irritated that I didn't think of that before. So now we've got these following test scores. Matilda, M Matilda, sorry, <laughs> Matilda got the following test scores on her first five tests in her seventh grade math class. So an 88, 90, 95, 88, 92. Whoa, that's really good. Good grades. Good job, Matilda. So how do we find the mean? The mean again is just the average. So we're going to take add up all of these numbers. So I'm going to write down these numbers that we're adding up and then we're going to divide all of them and division really is just like a fraction. So I'm going to divide all of them by how many numbers there are, which is one, two, three, four, five. So I take that and divide by five. Now this is okay. This lesson is absolutely okay to grab a calculator and use a calculator on this stuff. So that way this can speed up the process and trying to have, instead of trying to have to do this in our head. So you can see here, I have all of these added up and then I'm going to go ahead and figure out what is that number. So I get 453. So I'm going to go back to my problem over here and write down 453 is the numerator. And I'm dividing that by 5. And then what does that equal? Let's go back to my calculator. And I'll just take that 453 and divide it by. So I take my answer, divide by 5. And the answer is 90.6. Now, if there were more decimals, I would probably go three decimal places. You'll see in the solutions for the practice problems, I go three decimal places just to be a little bit more accurate. But there was only one decimal here, so that's easy, 90.6. So what does this number represent? That is her average test score in those first five tests. Or in other words, her mean test score. Mean statistically is the same thing as average. Now, can I just point out real quick on the calculator? Be very careful that you don't make this mistake. Let me show you this. Sometimes students take this whole thing and they've written out the numerator and the calculator and then they just say divide by five and that is a big mistake because you can see here the only thing we're actually dividing by five is 92. So you have to be very careful that you don't do that. You'd have to put parentheses around the entire numerator if you wanted to divide by five. So be careful. Do not do it that way where you only do the last number by five. Okay, so now let's do figure out what the median is. So let's come back up here, write down this definition. The median is just the middle number. That's all it is. You list out the numbers from least to greatest, and then you find the middle one. So we're also going to do an ex example where if you have an even amount of numbers, sometimes it's hard to find the middle because you there is not a middle number, but I'll show you that in a minute. So basically median just means middle, the middle number. So pause, get this written down if you don't have it yet, and then we're going to go back and do an example for median. Now in order to do this one, we're going to have to write out these numbers. So I'm going to write them out in order from smallest to largest. So when I write down the 88, that's the smallest number, I'm gonna cross it off. So that helps me keep track that I actually wrote down that number. Now the next number is also an 88. So I'm gonna cross that number off as I write down 88. And again, why am I crossing it off? Because I need to keep track of which ones I've used or not. Uh, then the next one is a 90, next one is 92, and then the last one, largest number is a 90. Five. Now that we've listed them in order, it's really simple to look and see which one's the middle number. Well, when there's only five, it's really simple. You can just eyeball it and count and see it right there. It's 90. So the median, the middle number is a 90. If we wanted to count, you could one, two, three from the beginning and then count from the back, from the back end. One, two, three, it'd be the middle third one from both sides. Okay. That's the median. That's it. All right. Now let's go on to mode. The definition for mode is just the number that shows up the most. It's the most frequently occurring number. Okay, pretty simple. Pause video, get this written down. 
So here's our mode. We just look at our numbers and say, okay, which one shows up the most? Well, 88, 88, it shows up twice. All the other numbers only show up one time. So the mode is 88. That's it. So that's pretty simple. Okay. So now what are we going to do with this? Let's say Matilda has to take, or Mathilda, Mathilda has to take one more test. And her test on the next one is a really bad result because she stayed up late playing around on social media. And then she gets a 42. Ah! She gets a 42. Now that's not normal, right? Her other scores were much better than a 42. So it's just a bummer that she got a 42. That is called an outlier. An outlier is a number that just doesn't seem to belong with the rest of the numbers. It's far off from the other ones. Okay, so for her score of 42, we'd consider that an outlier. Now what we're going to do is figure out what changes for our central tendency. So here's our old central tendency. Get those written down. We just did those real quick, but it's just there for you to reference. And now let's figure out the new one. So to figure out the mean, we have to take our old average, which was 453 over 5. And so we're now going to take 453 plus 453 plus the 42, and then divide it by how many test scores do we have now? We used to have five. She took another test. So now there's six test scores. Okay, so let's do this in our calculator. So I get 453 plus 42, that is 495. And I'm gonna divide that answer by six. And what does that give me? 82.5. So my new average or mean, my new mean is 82.5. So you can see, obviously we knew her average test score was gonna drop. Because if now she gets a 42, unfortunately it used to be a test score of A minus, now we're gonna be around the B, B minus range, 82.5. All right. So now what about the median? What happens? Well, in order to know median, we're going to have to make a list of the numbers. So the list of numbers, we're going to start with a 42 because that's the smallest. And if you remember, I'm going to make a list 88, 88, 90, 92, 95. So it's still those numbers didn't change. What becomes a little challenging about this list of numbers is that there's an even number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And when you have an even number, finding the median, it has to you have to do one extra step. Here's why. You go to the middle, 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. The middle is somewhere in between these. And so you take the two middle numbers like this and you find their average. Well, this one's really simple because we're just going to say 88 plus 90. That's a 90 right there. And then you divide by two. You take their average. Sometimes they're not quite so simple as this. I mean, obviously the middle of 88 and 90 is just 89. So that one's kind of an obvious one. But sometimes the answers will be numbers that are much further apart than that. And you would just take the average of those two middle numbers. Okay. And then, uh, so let's see what happened. What changed? Median went from 90. And then she has that one extra test score and it dropped to 89. That's not much of a drop. It just barely dropped. Whereas the mean, this average, it dropped quite a bit. How about the mode? Did the mode change? It was at 88. Uh, 88 is still the one that shows up the most. So that didn't change. Okay, so you can see what changed the most. The mean changed, the median and the mode hardly changed at all. The mode didn't change at all, but the median barely, barely changed. It went from 90 to 89. So when we talk about central tendency, when you have an outlier, it's important to recognize because then some of these are not as accurate to reflect the data as others. So this is what I mean by that. When you have an outlier and mean are affected, while median and mode, they may not change at all. So median is usually going to be our thing that we're going to use more often. That's what it says right here. When outliers are involved, we want to use median when we have an outlier. Let me give you an example of this. Salaries. Let's say in your little hometown, you're living in your hometown and people have decent living. Maybe they make a lot of money, maybe they don't. But then all of a sudden, three guys move into your town. And these three guys look like this. Have you seen them before? Do you know who they are? Bill Gates, Microsoft guy. Jeff Bezos, Amazon guy, Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, that type of thing. These guys are very, very wealthy. They have a lot of money. And so if we talk about their salaries, how much money they make per year, and they were to all of a sudden move into your little town, that is going to be an outlier. Those three salaries that those guys make are going to throw off the average salary in your hometown. All of a sudden, the average is going to be really, really high. But, if you, but that does not represent your hometown. Just because they move there doesn't mean that's everybody else is making a bunch of money. Well, though they might because maybe they'd hire them. But we want to use a median when you have outliers because median helps reflect what your town is actually like with people that live there. Another ex good example of that would be maybe you have a town full of trailer parks. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. 
I'm just saying usually if people live in a trailer park, they're not making quite as much money as maybe somebody who lives in a nice big house, which is fine. I just we're talking about home values. So if this is a whole town of these trailers and then one guy moves in and builds a really nice house and you were to use the average value of the houses, the average value is totally going to be thrown off by this big mansion, right? The average value of house is going to look like this. That's the average value, not this. And so we don't want the, this big, huge mansion to throw it off. So we would use a median. Median is better to use when you have outliers. Okay. Now we're not going to have to figure out exactly how to, how to figure out what, if a number is an outlier or not. We're in math seven, we're going to keep it really simple. And that is you just look at the group of numbers. So if you have a group of numbers that are within, you know, a bunch of numbers, blah, 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 blah. And then you have one number that's way off here. We're just going to say that's an outlier. Okay. We're not going to worry about figuring out technically the statistical way of doing that. That's something for a more advanced math class. All right. One more thing to talk about, and that is distribution. Remember in our last unit, we did some distribution stuff. So when you have a normal distribution like this, so it's just a nice normal curve, things are just kind of centered around the middle, your mode is up here, then the mean and the median are very close to each other. The mean and the median are going to be somewhere right in the middle. Okay, they're very, very close. But if you have a skewed left graph like this, then that means you have some outliers. Boom, boom, boom. You've got some outliers off here to the left and it's pulling it left. So what that does is the mean gets pulled to the left. The median might get a little bit pulled, but not like the mean does. The mean gets pulled way left. So here's what that means. The mean gets pulled left, which means the mean is smaller than the median. Mean is less than median. Median's bigger, mean is smaller. Well, what about skewed right? So you have this graph, it's gonna be skewed right over here. So that means the mean, the average, is going to get pulled off here to the right. So here is skewed left, mean goes left. Here it's skewed right, mean gets pulled to the right, which in this case means that the median is now smaller than the mean. The mean gets pulled to the right, so it's bigger. So mean is greater than median, or think of it as median is smaller than mean. So these are things you have to be able, able to identify in our practice today, as well as on your master check. If the data is skewed, meaning you have outliers, you want to use median, not mean. We kind of talked about that. We hammered that pretty hard. All right, so the last thing is, what about this situation? Let's just say all you know is the mean, median, and mode. You don't see this distribution stuff. All you see is these numbers. Well, which one's bigger? We have the median at 62.5, and the median, excuse me, the mean is much smaller than this compared, look at that, median and mode are both hovering in the mid-60s, and then the median is way down here at 42.8. So what kind of situation do we have here? We have where the mean is smaller. The mean is smaller than the median, so this is a skewed left situation. You've got an outlier off to the left, an outlier that's way off here somewhere, at least one, maybe even more, and so it's skewing it to the left. Okay. That wraps up our lesson. Should give you everything you need for the practice. So rock that mastery check. This is Mr. Bean signing off, and I will see you back in our next lesson.